Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and I'm here today to talk about the brand new Illustrator CS6, and more importantly, my top six favorite features. So let's dive right in. First of all, Illustrator has gotten a lot of work under the hood. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even look like the old Illustrator that you've known from the past. Illustrator's got a brand new user interface. So it's dark. it's got a dark interface just like Photoshop. You can control it, you can use a preset, going from light to dark, or just simply sliding the slider anywhere in between, including matching the canvas color. But it doesn't stop there. So that's, that's my actual first favorite feature, is just the ability to control my user interface. The second one is one that I really can't show you, per se, because it's under the hood. Illustrator, and many of you have used Illustrator for years and years and years, the one thing you've constantly asked for, besides new cool things, is you just wanted a faster Illustrator. You wanted it to perform faster, weight less, less progress bars, being able to open bigger documents, being able to work faster. Illustrator CS6, my top six favorite features. Number two, it's 64-bit now. That means it can take advantage of all the RAM that you have or that you throw at it, and it will work faster than any previous version of Illustrator before. So my second one, again, not one that I can really you know, show you in a dialog box or show you in a panel, but it is my second favorite feature because I've always wanted Illustrator to work faster. So as I continue on, you'll just see the speed enhancements as we go. All right, let's get to number three. My third favorite one is actually one that works with type because I work with type typography all the time. So I'm going to switch over here. By the way, we do have some new um, workspace presets. I'm going to switch over to my typography preset here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this type uh, that I have on the page here. Let's go ahead and select all of that. And of course, you know, we've had given you the ability in the past on the control panel to control aspects like your character, your um, styles of that particular character. And of course, from the character panel, you can do the same things. But we've added some new things. So I'm just going to pull the character panel out here for just for a second. First and foremost is all of this is tabbable, meaning you can tab into any one of these uh, from the keyboard without leaving the keyboard. Uh, as you're typing and doing things that you need to do. So for example, uh, using my up and down arrow keys. Yes, finally, you can just you know cycle through your fonts, picking uh, fonts visually on screen for your selected type. Also, if I tab down to the style, I can even just use my up and down arrow keys to toggle between the styles. So that's one of my favorite things, just number three, just the improvements right there alone. But let's continue on with my number three, and that is, of course, all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript, great. But if we show options, we now have buttons for those as well. It's a little thing. It's something that InDesign has had for a long time, but I'm happy to see all of these enhancements visually now and clickable now directly inside of Illustrator without having to jump through hoops. So that's my number three, just improvements in typography in the type panel all the way around across the board. All right, so I'm going to put the character panel away. We're going to get to some of my bigger ones now. Okay, I'm going to jump over to my fourth favorite feature, which deals with um, image tracing. Now, we've had live trace. We've had all these features in the past. We completely stripped all that out of Illustrator and rebuilt it from the ground up using a new image trace engine. And to give you better results, sharper lines, fewer paths, basically all the things you've asked for. So I'm going to switch over to my tracing workspace here and that will bring up my uh, image trace panel with that image trace panel i'm going to go ahead and select my uh, artwork here and again this is a photograph of some leaves and i want to basically convert that photograph into vector art so i can do it with presets if i don't know what i'm doing i can just simply grab a preset or i can of course get into all the advanced options and control every aspect of the tracing myself but just Turning that photo into a low fidelity uh, trace happens in seconds. That's it. It's done. That's now vector artwork. So not only better results, but much faster results, again, with my number two, I believe it was, 64-bit 
uh, feature. Now, of course, uh, I could leave it with that and then, of course, expand it and work with the individual elements. But I just want to show you a couple more here. We can go to, for example, Shades of Gray. It doesn't have to be color. Uh, maybe you want to uh, color the artwork yourself and you want to work with Shades of Gray and that way you're not uh, inspired or, or you know contaminated by the previous colors of the photo. But you can work with it any way you want, all the way down to just simply silhouettes. So using the silhouettes, I just basically get black and white, and then I can start from scratch filling it in. So I'm going to do just that. We're going to go ahead and expand that artwork out. Then I'm going to double click, and as I double click, I'm drilling down into the artwork itself. So I drill down in from the image, from the Photoshop image, down into the group of vectors. I'll double click one more time until I actually get to the path itself. Now that I'm on the path, I can actually use one of my swatches to fill that particular, oh, we're on the stroke there, let's undo that. Let's go to the actual fill color, there we go. And we'll go to our swatches there, and we'll just go ahead and fill that in with a color. Okay, so we fill that in with a color, and now, we, again, we can continue working with each individual vector. We can retrace it. We can, we're going to jump into my number five, which is taking this image trace result and creating a pattern with it. That's right. We can do patterns now very quickly and easily inside of um, Illustrator CS6. So I'm going to jump over. I don't have a pattern making uh, layout here or a, a workspace. So I'm just going to jump to my regular layout one. And we're going to go ahead and go up to our uh, object menu, come down to pattern, and we're just going to simply say make. In other words, turn this artwork into a pattern. But it's not like your old fashioned pattern making tools of Photoshop's past or in the past before. What this will do is bring up an entirely new interface for pattern making. And of course, we get a new pattern options panel. And if I want, by the way, I could convert this new uh, workspace into a new one called pattern making. That way, um, I will be able to jump to this layout again with my pattern options and layouts and everything where I want them, uh, just like we could with any other workspace. So just that quickly, I've not only created a pattern, but I've made a workspace out of it. Now, we don't want to leave the pattern as is. That would be too easy. We want to go in and actually um, make some changes here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key, and we're just going to duplicate it by dragging it. So that makes the second one. And as you can see, it's doing a live pattern. So we're getting the, the pattern results all around us as we continue to work with this object. So I'm going to scale it down a bit, and the pattern will update. And again, because of the 64-bit and all the new speed and, and enhancements under the hood, we're getting those results much, much faster. And we can, of course, uh, rotate this a bit so that it's not so much like the original. And we're just going to go ahead and make another copy of that. And we're just going to go ahead and make another, uh, choose another color for this one as well. So we'll just choose kind of like a violet color there. We'll make this one a little smaller. And all along while we're doing this, it is actually building a new swatch for us. So when we're, when we're done, we will have this actual pattern as a swatch. I'm going to actually rotate this one differently. There we go. And we've got our new pattern swatch. And I might even go for broke here. And let's see, can I do this? I don't know if it'll let me do this or not. Yes, it does. It lets me lower the opacity as we go as well. So that's going to be a kind of a cool pattern with a slightly lower opacity than we had before. Let's do the same thing on this one. There we go. Just lower the opacity slightly. And when I'm done, by the way, we'll go back to our pattern options. I can go ahead and name this pattern right off the bat. We'll call it Leaves uh, 2 because I think I did a previous one. And then when I'm done, I just click Done. And of course, everything go, the, the interface goes away because now it's gone ahead and made that pattern as a swatch. So I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, this existing artwork off the page here. And we'll just create a new uh, box, something rectangle, something to fill that with our new pattern. And if we go to our swatches now, there's our new pattern that we created, leaves two. And it will just fill that with our new pattern. So easy quick pattern making, um, you know, for people that are in textiles, people that are doing clothing design, people that are doing designs in general, where you need a, a pattern, but you need to customize it quickly and easily with the new pattern feature. All right, 
So if that was number five, what's number six? Let's jump over to this other document that I have open here. And number six is really, really cool. For people that do design, do logos, number six deals with gradient strokes. I remember when I first heard that Illustrator was getting gradient strokes, I thought, oh, big deal. You know, InDesign's had that already. It's not, you know, not going to be that cool. Until I realized that you can do a lot more in Illustrator's gradient strokes than you can in any other gradient strokes that we've had at Adobe. So first and foremost, what are we looking at here? These different designs and patterns. Let's go ahead and turn on our original layer and our originals. And that's what these are. These are just, just simple designs or swirls that were enhanced with a couple of features. Number one, they were enhanced, of course, with gradient strokes. Number two, they were enhanced with variable width. So let's see how to create one of these. I have an empty document here. I'm just going to grab my uh, spiral tool under my line tool here. And I'm just going to use my tablet and just drag out a nice spiral. So, not really all that fantastic or fancy. We've been doing that for a long time. But we'll switch over to the stroke. We'll make that stroke uh, 20 points in weight. And now that we have that, we'll go to our gradient panel here. And because we have the stroke selected, we now have the ability, first of all, that we didn't have before, which is making that a gradient. So we can make it a linear radial gradient. We make it a linear gradient. We get the gradient uh, along, I believe that's called, within the stroke. We have the ability to have it along the stroke, and we have the ability to have it across the stroke. I'll show you those in a moment. Let's go to our swatches. And let's just, actually, let's go back to the gradient for a minute here. Let's just mess with some colors. Actually, yeah, I do want to go to swatches for that. So we're just going to go ahead and choose uh, kind of a basic gradient. We've seen that gradient a million times. But now when we go back to our gradient, we have the ability to control, of course, the colors, uh, the amount of gradient in any particular color, any particular area along the range. We can double click on those and change the color to whatever we want. But I just wanted to show you some of the options here. So that's the way it looks going from the lighter orange around to the darker orange. If I switch over here to this one, the gradient kind of goes from one color starting at the one end of the stroke to the other color at the other end of the stroke. And across the stroke looks you know, like the gradient's going from one edge of the stroke to the other edge of the stroke in that color. So very cool options to be able to do that, but again, that's not as fantastic as combining it with variable width now, which is what I'd like to do. So we just go to our width tool. And with our width tool, we now have the ability to expand or combine or contract that width to vary the width uh, of that particular stroke to get a fancier gradient than we might have gotten in the past. Uh, that's a bit much. Let's try that again. There we go. And we can, of course, play around with this anywhere along the path. You get some really cool designs, really cool effects like that. So I expect logos to really look a little fancier now with gradient strokes. So there you have it. My top six favorite features inside Illustrator CS6. New user interface, 64-bit. We have the ability to do uh, image trace, the new type panel, the new pattern creation. And, of course, last but not least, the gradient, um, gradient strokes on any object that we have strokes on. So very cool design tools, fast under the hood engine and en performance enhancements, uh, new user interface that just looks better, types bigger throughout the panels, lots of little enhancements along the way that I didn't get a chance to talk about. But there you have it, my top six favorite features of Illustrator CS6. Go download it, integrates with Creative Cloud. You're going to love it. Take care. My name is Terry White.